Hello, let me explain what's going on in this video. So on my birthday last year, my childhood best friend sent me blind dates with books that she made for my birthday, which was so incredibly nice. And I thought it'd be so fun to make a video where I unwrap the blind dates with books and then read them all. So last year I started filming that video. I unwrapped the blind dates with books. And then for some reason, I just forgot to finish the video. Don't know what happened there. And then I recently refound this footage of me unwrapping the blind dates with books. And I was like, oh my gosh, I should finish this video and read them. So this video kind of jumps in time. In the beginning, I'm going to be on my birthday last year, and then we'll come back to present day where I read all of the books and tell you my thoughts. Oh my gosh, you guys, this was not a video I planned to make, but my childhood bestie Riley just sent me a box for my birthday and I just opened it and I did not expect this. They're blind dates with books. I'm going to cry. These are so cutely wrapped. There's so many books, four books. That's a lot. I think it would be fun to open and read all the blind dates with books that she sent me. Okay, it's the next day and I'm ready to open these. I'm so excited. My friend Riley did text me that she just realized one of the books that's in here I do already own, which is a bummer. Okay, let's get started. I kind of want to open this one first because it's really thick. And also the description says, one of my favorite authors, fantasy, new adult, romance, number one New York Times bestseller, heartache of loss, prince of freedom, and the power of love. Plus it's won a Goodreads choice award. Okay, I'm going to make a little tear on the side. <gasps> it says Sarah J Mass. I do love Sarah J Mass. I was like kind of thinking and hoping that's what it meant by one of my favorite authors. Crescent City. She's like an auto buy author for me now. And I haven't seen Crescent City in the bookstore several times and have not bought it yet. So to own it, I'm so excited. Also, how many pages is this? It is just over 800 pages. That's crazy, that's so thick. This one, is, she wrote, is like a little bit out of my comfort zone, so I'm really intrigued by that. It's sci-fi, which I've only read one sci-fi book before, Ender's Game, so I'm like intrigued by more sci-fi. I'm scared I might not love sci-fi, I don't know. But sci-fi, fantasy, thriller, adult, mystery. It has also won a Goodreads Choice Award, it was a number one New York Times bestseller. It says, out of your comfort zone, not your typical alley book. An irresistible story of epic adventure, redemption, and discovery. And it was rated, oh my gosh, 4.52 stars on Goodreads. That is so high. Like, honestly, I would read like anything with that high of a rating. A little tear in the back is black. Ooh, Project Hail Mary. And there's an astronaut, so we're going to space. Ryland Grace is a sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission. And if he fails, humanity and Earth itself will perish. Except that right now, he doesn't know that. He can't even remember his own name, let alone the nature of his assignment or how to complete it. What? That is crazy. He's a sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission to save Earth, and he's got like amnesia or something. That is a wild plot. Okay, let's keep reading. All he knows is that he's been asleep for a very long time, and he's just been awakened to find himself millions of miles from home with nothing but two corpses for company his crewmates dead, his memories fuzzily returning, Ryland realizes that an impossible task now confronts him. He's got to do it all alone. Or does he? Wait, what? Is he gonna make like an alien friend? <laughs> does one of his like crewmates come back from the dead? This one, I think I might know what it is. I think this might be the one that I already own and have read. It says, mystery thriller, adult crime, LGBT, a richly layered story of love, friendship, and obsession, a well-written and gripping ode to the stage a hero, villain, tyrant, temptress, and extras. I think this one might be We Were Villains. It is If We Were Villains, which is a very good book. So this is like perfect for Riley to pick this out for me, but I do already own it and have read it. So that is a bummer. Okay, let's open the last one. This one sounds like it's gonna be perfect for me. It says, it's on my want to read list on Goodreads. That's cool. Romance, young adult, deals with mental health, New York Times bestseller, Goodreads Choice Award, a heart-wrenching, Charming love story. Cute! <gasps> it's All the Bright Places, which is now a Netflix movie. I haven't seen the movie. I've been really wanting to see the movie. So now that I have the book, this is perfect. I can read the book and then watch the movie. And this is like such a me book, I feel like. I don't even actually know if I know what it's about. It says it's about Theodore, who is fascinated by death. Every day he thinks of ways he might die. Oh no, Theodore. But every day he also searches for and manages to find something to keep him here and alive. When Finch and Violet meet on the ledge of the bell tower at school, six stories above the ground, it's unclear 
who saves whom. I remember seeing the trailers for this film and Elle Fanning is cast as Violet and I love Elle Fanning so I feel like it's gonna be great to read this book and like picture her playing Violet. Hello, we are back in present day, so it's time to choose a book to read. I am so excited about all these books, but there is one book in particular that I want to start first. Oh, hold that thought. Oh my gosh, my mattress arrived! This is perfect timing because Helix Sleep has sponsored today's video. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door. Danny came and helped me unbox the mattress. It was so easy to unbox. Oh, that's comfy. Very comfortable. The top just feels so soft. Yeah, it's a very nice mattress. I have not had a new mattress in years, so I'm just like so excited. One of my favorite things about the whole shopping process with Helix is that you fill out a quiz and then they match you with which mattress they think you would like the best and like me and Danny got to fill it out which was nice so it picked a mattress that was a compromise between both of our needs while sleeping. I personally am a side sleeper. I love a medium mattress and then I share a mattress obviously with my boyfriend. Based on my results Helix matched me with their Midnight Lux mattress. In the quiz we both said that we're really hot sleepers so it added the Glossy Oetex cooling cover to our mattress which I'm so happy they did because I get so hot while sleeping. I think I'm gonna sleep way better. Also, the mattress ships right to your door, which is so convenient, and they have free shipping in the US. And they have a 100 night sleep trial to test the mattress and make sure you love it. Hello, it's Future Alley. It's about a week later. I wanted to update you guys on my thoughts on the mattress now that I've been sleeping on it for a bit. It's great. I love it. I've been sleeping so good. It's just so soft. It's so comfortable. I also got the dream pillow set from them, and I've been loving the pillows. I feel like I just like sink into them at night. It's the best feeling. And you can go to my link to take the Helix sleep quiz and also get 20% off your mattress and two free pillows, which is such a great deal. I feel like it's such a great self-care move. Prioritizing your sleep and comfort is so important. Anyway, let's get back to picking the book I'm going to read first. So as I was saying, I already know which book I want to read first, and that is Project Hail Mary. I really want to start this book because it's just so different from anything that I've ever read before. I just feel like based on the concept, I'm going to love it. Also, my friend Riley, who gifted me these books, has already read this book and she loved it. So yeah, I just feel really confident that it's gonna be a hit. And then I wanna read All the Bright Places second. And then for Crescent City, just a fair warning, I might not read this book in this video just because I just finished the Throne of Glass series and I feel like I just need a break from starting a new giant fantasy series. So yeah, probably won't read this book in this video, but I do 100% wanna read it eventually. I think I'm gonna love it. Okay, let's start Project Hail Mary. I am really liking the book so far. It starts immediately with our main character waking up in space alone and he doesn't remember anything, which is crazy and so freaky. Like to imagine myself in that scenario, I don't know what I do. I would have a panic attack. So yeah, I just really like that we jump right into the action and we're slowly learning more about how he got into this situation in space because we have dual timeline. We have present day where he's in space alone and then we're like flashing back to the past to like learn more about how he got there. Holy cow, what I just read on page 120 is crazy. The last line in the synopsis is, he's got to do it all alone, or does he? And the or does he is coming into play. And I'm so, so hooked. I feel like what I just read is about to change literally everything. I just hit page 206, and this is not a spoiler because it's on the back of the book, but it says that humanity and earth are at risk of perishing and that we are learning a lot about. And it just like shows you how unguaranteed life is, which maybe is very depressing to say. I don't know, I feel like this book is making me think there's like so much we take for granted as just being a part of life, having access to like food and water. And that is not the case for humanity on this fictional earth. Earth itself is at risk, which means every human is at risk and it just like makes you like your skin crawl in a way thinking about the fact that this could happen to our earth even though that's like so 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 unlikely i am 
on page 280. And the thing that is so freaking cool about this book is the science, which I know that I like science in books because whenever I read The Atlas Six, that book had a lot of science in it. And I loved that part of that book. I thought that was like so cool and fascinating. And this book has science. So I'm like, maybe I should seek out more like sciencey kind of books. I think I like that. Do I understand the majority of the science? Absolutely not. Do I feel smart reading it? Yes. And the fact that the author wrote all of this very complex speculative science is so impressive and he is not a scientist by profession. It says he built a career as a software engineer until the success of his first book, The Martian, allowed him to live out his dream of writing full time. And he's a lifelong space nerd and devoted hobbyist of subjects such as relativistic physics, orbital mechanics and the history of manned spaceflight. That is crazy to me. That's like so impressive. Like how much research went into this book? I don't know, but it feels like a tremendous amount. It's a few days later, I'm on page 383 and I am obsessed with Ryland and Rocky. Their friendship is everything to me. Like top five book friendships of all time. Rocky. He's just so pure. Like I would lay down my life for Rocky. If it was between me or Rocky existing on this earth, I'm, I'm out of here. It's Rocky, like he's just the best. That is all to say I'm scared now because whenever I get really attached to any character, I then start to feel so anxious as I get towards the end of a book. Like what is our third act conflict gonna be? And will anything happen to my favorite characters? Anyway, me and my parents are about to go and sit at a winery, so that'd be kind of cute to bring my book and sit there and read. Hello, I'm back in my apartment and I finished the book. I feel like I was between four and a half and five stars for a while and I was like, the ending is really gonna determine what my final rating is gonna be. And I loved the ending so much, so five stars. This book is literally just so good. I feel like I've been kind of giving out a lot of five stars this year. But number one, I think I've just been reading really good books this year. And I also think this might be my favorite book I've read this year. If not my favorite, like top three for sure. It's so good. And I feel like it's for everybody. I was just talking to Danny about it and I think I convinced him to read it, which we never have overlapping book taste. So that's quite cool. Also, it's gonna be a movie. It's not coming out until 2026, but Ryan Gosling is playing the lead, which makes me so excited because he would be absolutely perfect for this part. And one other quick note before we move on to the next book. I listened to some of this in audiobook form and the way they do the voice for one of the characters is really cool. So I would highly recommend going back and forth between the physical and the audiobook. Okay, next book, like I said, is gonna be All the Bright Places. And I actually already started it. I'm on page 105. It's basically about Finch and Violet. They're in high school and have different hearts hard backstories that makes them both really struggle with mental health. They actually meet on the first day at the beginning of this book on top of the bell tower, kind of debating if they still wanna be alive. So definitely check the trigger warnings for this book. And they kind of bond over that. And then they're also doing a class project together that's like forcing them to explore the city they live in. I'm really glad they have the plot point of this like adventurous class project. I think it's a good balance of depth, tough topics like mental health and fun, adventurous young adult romance, at least so far. Good morning. I am not that much further in the book. I'm on page 154. And whenever I started this book over the weekend and got to like page 100 or whatever page I was at, I had only done that listening to the audiobook. And then actually reading the physical book some yesterday and this morning has been so nice. I am a big audiobook person, love audiobooks, but sometimes I do feel like I get less out of the book when I listen to the audiobook. It depends. I think if it's a, I don't know, like light, romance or something like that that is totally fine but then other books sometimes i feel like i miss kind of the details and the nuance in audiobook form because i'm maybe not giving the audiobook 100 percent of my attention and i kind of feel like i was doing that with this book like once i actually switched to the physical book i was like oh my gosh i'm liking this 
way more now that I'm really paying attention to every single word and sentence. Specifically, Finch's internal monologue. He has so many dark thoughts about his own life. The way the author phrases them is so good. Like it makes me feel like I can fully, fully understand Finch's mindset and who he is. And I just think she describes having those hard thoughts really well. I'm on page 264 and there's definitely a lot of conflict happening and I don't know if we're fully in the third act conflict or if there's even going to be a bigger conflict that happens before the book ends. I'm scared because Finch has some traits that can be good but can also be bad like he's very impulsive, very self-destructive, he really struggles with his mental health and it didn't really occur to me until now like just how much all of those traits combined may not go well with him dealing with the third act conflict like I'm just really scared that something sad is gonna happen and Finch is just gonna fully self-destruct. Yeah, I'm just stressed because Finch and Violet both just deserve so much happiness. I finished the book and I cried like four times. It was so sad, but it was so good. I don't, ugh. I've been really debating on my rating. It was amazing. It was so good. I loved it so much. I felt like so connected to the characters, like they were real people. I don't know. I loved Violet so much. I loved Finch so, so much. I feel like I was just like really fully in his head when I was in his POV. Sometimes though, I do debate like if I like sad books. I don't know if any Anyone else feels this way but I don't know I guess like sometimes I feel like the real world is already a hard place do I also want to read about the world being a hard place in fiction books I don't know okay on the one hand I think I like that sad books make me feel so much tell me your thoughts do you like sad books do you avoid them there's also like a spectrum to sad books like there are the sad books that are just like all pain like a little life and then there are the sad books that like have hope and happiness and even though they make you cry they also build you up like they have a range to them and i feel like this book falls more into that category which i liked i feel like i really have to process this book like i'm just feeling so many emotions like this book just took me on a roller coaster of like happiness and joy and feeling that giddy feeling from a crush but also so anger and sadness and hopelessness like all in one like this I was going like this I think I'm gonna say 4.25 stars for now but I do think I just have to like digest this book I do want to watch the movie I watched the trailer and sobbed so I think I'm gonna take a few days and then watch the movie but let's do a little recap let me get all the books from the blind dates with books First I read Project Hail Mary, which was so good, gave five stars. Then All the Right Places, which you just read my review on. And then the third book, Crescent City, which I do really want to start soon. I think I'm going to love it so much. I'm intimidated by the side, but I've read other giant Sarah J Mass books, so I know I can do it. And thank you so much to my bestie Riley for sending me these books. I feel like she knows my book taste so well because I loved the two that I read so incredibly much. Honestly, my head is like still in All the Right Places. Like I feel like I can't think about anything else right now. Anyway, with that. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!